For the seventh consecutive year, Black Lives Matter Global is urging its followers to build black, buy black, and bank black this holiday season. On Black Friday, the social justice organization posted their Black Xmas logo on their Instagram page with a caption that read in part, White supremacist capitalism uses policing to protect profits and steal black life. Critics dubbed the initiative and the post racist and segregationist. Many conservative news outlets accuse Black Lives Matter of organizing a white company boycott. But it's not just Black Lives Matter opponents uh, being critical of an organization's call to reject major corporations. Many BLM supporters also took to social media to scrutinize the organization's stance. That's because B uh, Black Lives Matter also receives millions in corporate dollars. Some went as far as to call out Black Lives Matter leaders like co-founder Patrice Khan Cullors, who purchased millions of dollars in real estate in predominantly white communities. Despite the paradox of Black Lives Matter urging their supporters to divert their dollars from the same, well, I guess some of the same corporations that receive funds from, they are far from the first organization to rely on what some have called toxic philanthropy. In 2014, United Negro College Fund faced steep criticism and was even dropped by one of its largest public service employee unions when it accepted $25 million uh, in donations from the Koch brothers. Joining me now to discuss the balancing act between righteous causes and unrighteous dollars is co-founder of Black Lives Matter Los Angeles, Melina Abdullah. So Melina, how do you address this uh, criticism that, uh, that BLM receives corporate money, uh, but you know this stance uh, asks people to not support some corporations? Well, it's interesting that there would be that kind of criticism because there's a vast difference between receiving money and spending money. So we don't want to give our money to white supremacist corporations like Walmart, which are partially responsible for the murders of brothers like John Crawford and Stephen Taylor. And I'm in Phoenix, Arizona right now, where we know that a wheelchair-bound brother was um, just killed outside of a Walmart store. We want to make sure that we hold corporations like 24-Hour Fitness, which called police on two of its black male patrons, Albert Ramon Dorsey and Dennis Todd Rogers. We want to hold them accountable. So the idea of being intentional with the use of black dollars um, is something that is very different from what we really think of when we think about um, holding corporations accountable and saying that they owe us. Um, when they give money, they're actually owing us back. They are, um, in some senses, paying reparations. Of course, we never accept dollars from right. someone like the Koch brothers or others that are seeking to buy us off. Um, but I think it's very different when you talk about spending as opposed to receiving philanthropic dollars. There are no clean philanthropic dollars, but we can be intentional with the way that we spend our dollars, which is what Black Xmas is about. Right, right. But Melinda, you, you know, it's, it's not quite that clean. A lot of corporations try to buy good PR, buy brownie points by giving money to people, even though their own personal practices may not be supporting black lives, may might be supporting their own black employees. They may be engaged you know, in destructive practices around not only in the U.S., but around the, the world where it exploits people. That's just a real thing, right? So it's, it's not as clean as to say, just, you know, it's different if we, if we don't give them the money, but they give us the money. But every, it, you know, each one of those transactions, people are being used. And so if, if a company that does not have a great track record on racial issues gives money, it does buy them great PR to then be able to issue a press release to say, we gave this money to BLM. Don't you, don't you agree with that? I absolutely agree with that. It's super complicated. We always really try to kind of be thoughtful about who we will and who we won't accept money from. I'm not saying that we do everything perfect. Um, that said, I think that we can allow that complication, which is gonna be complicated, to divert us from what Black Xmas is really about. Black Xmas, again, is about being intentional with the use of our own dollars and saying, how do we support Black-led, Black-serving organizations at a time when 
white supremacist corporations try to whip us up into a consumerist frenzy? How do we say, rather than buy your grandmother a sweater at Walmart, let's give $50 to a Black-led organization that supports the arts in Black communities? Um, how do we say, if we are going to buy, because our grandmother does really need a new sweater, that we're going to seek out Black businesses, 40% of which have been forced to shutter in the midst of a pandemic? How do we say we're going to withdraw our dollars from black from white corporate banks and put them with black banks that are often much more supportive of Black Lives Matter and other black causes? And so we want to keep our eyes on the prize and be focused on Black Xmas. Of course, where we receive philanthropic dollars from is largely from individual donors. And when we receive um, corporate uh, philanthropic dollars, we do try to carefully vet those dollars, but it's always complicated because we do live in the midst of white supremacist capitalism. And there is something, um, you know, the Panthers used to talk about something called survival pending revolution. How do you live in the midst of these contradictions and how do you navigate very complicated spaces? And I think that's what you're raising. Right. So, so what is the, what is part of that vetting process? Like, what are the things that would disqualify you? So, if you have a company like Amazon, they give money, but you know, people in in I think it was Alabama tried to unionize. Uh, uh, there were tactics used that some people really didn't agree with. Uh, Alabama is a very black state. I don't know how what percentage of the, the, the uh, uh, Amazon employees in Alabama are black, but you see the the conflict there, right? There, there's union people trying to get together collectively bargain get better wages better working conditions but they give money to you what is what would be the thing or what are the series of things that would say this is the company that we cannot take money from so one we never allow any company or any donor to buy us off so when you talk about the unionization of workers in bessemer alabama a lot of that work was supported by Black Lives Matter. We were very present and are very present around the rights of Amazon workers. In fact, our Black Xmas boycott, our actual demonstration last year, so there's always an action, a demonstration that accompanies Black Xmas, was actually at Amazon headquarters in Los Angeles. So the site of our protest was actually Amazon. So we would never exchange dollars for the positions that we take. You also never see Black Lives Matter saying, go support Amazon or go support whatever corporation gives us money. We never um, allow that to be a commercial for that corporation. Of course, um, when People ask, have you received money? We're honest, but we never allow that to be a badge for those corporations. So there's also, you know, a list of worst offenders, right? And so we'd never take money from Walmart. We'd never take money from Coke Industries. Um, and when we think about that, there's a conversation that happens among chapters, among the leadership of Black Lives Matter around kind of controversial donors and whether or not we would accept money, and there's money that we've rejected. Are there any corporations that uh, that are not black-owned that you would, be, you know, because there is a relationship, right? And that's not that they're buying you off, but there's a relationship there because they've given money. Would would, would you support uh, doing business with any of those in addition to the black-owned companies? So to be very clear, Black Xmas is about building Black. That means donating to Black-led, Black-serving organizations, right? Doing that it, before you become a consumer, think about how to use your dollars to build Black, right? Make that the gift that you give your loved one. When we buy during Black Xmas, we want to encourage everyone to exclusively buy from Black businesses, especially the black businesses that are beneficial to the community, your small black owned bookstores, not Amazon, right? Um, making sure that we support black owned businesses. So in short, your question about are there other companies that we'd say to buy from? No, not during black Xmas season, of course, 
We know that it's very difficult. There are people who did social experiments to try to buy exclusively black. And it's very difficult, especially when you talk about necessities like gas and groceries. Um, mm -hmm. I'm fortunate enough to live in a place like Los Angeles, where there are a few black owned gas stations and a few black owned grocery stores, but we're not asking people to starve during the holiday season. Right. So if you need to buy gas right. and groceries, we understand. Melina Abdullah, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Always a pleasure. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much.